My question is for the Minister of Transport. Aside from completing Project DART and the Auckland Rail Electrification Project, what other rail capital projects in Auckland do the government's transport strategies contemplate funding over the next 10 years? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I thank the member for his question because the government, of course, in addition to the two projects he mentioned, recently announced the deal for the final EMU train purchase with Auckland Council, which will give us the opportunity to procure 50% more electric trains than was originally proposed as a result of the $500 million crown loan and the additional uh, government funding of up to $90 million. Uh, following on from that, I quote probably the best answers for further projects is to quote for the members' uh, benefit from the Connecting New Zealand document, uh, which I happen to have here in the House for the member, which stated, attention is now turning to which major projects and development will need to be prioritised after these current projects are completed. This includes consideration of a third harbour crossing, improved central business district access, including a possible city centre rail link, and further infrastructure to support ferries and bus transport. The document goes on to say that careful prioritisation will be needed to provide the right solutions at the right time and to ensure we are maximising the efficient and effective use of networks. Phil Twyford. Supplementary to the Minister. Given that Auckland Council confirmed by 18 votes to two that the city rail link was the, quote, top priority transport project for Auckland, unquote, is he concerned about the level of misalignment between the government's transport priorities for Auckland and those of Auckland Council? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, no. It is quite uh, common for councils uh, to have views and to then come to government and seek funding for different projects. The government, of course, has to prioritise all the projects across the country, and it tends to do so with things such as benefit-cost ratios to allow it to evaluate the different projects. Currently, the CBD rail link... I'll come to that. Currently, the CBD rail link has a benefit-cost ratio of 0.3, as against some of the other projects uh, the members opposite are concerned about, which are all in excess of one. Phil Twyford. In relation to the Ministry of Transport's review of the City Rail Link's business case which has led to the number which the Minister just quoted, does he know that that review relies on Fanshawe, Albert and Simon Streets coping with more than 1,000 buses per hour by 2040? And are such huge numbers of diesel buses in the city centre consistent with this government's vision for Auckland? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think the member will find he's been reading too many left-wing transport blogs. The reality is that... Well, there's, there's, there's two or three. Um, the, uh, the reality is that the, uh, the government's review of the business case does not require any such thing. The reality is what's very important is that we assess all the options for transport into the CBD in Auckland going forward. And I think it is important that we do that uh, without rushing straight to one solution. And that's what the government is seeking and that's what the business case review recommends. Phil Twyford. Uh, uh, beg your pardon. Point of order. Oh, point of order, Phil Twyford. I seek leave of the House to uh, table a report, additional Waitamata Harbour Crossing Network Plan, which was commissioned by uh, the Transport Agency. And it's the document that actually sets out uh, that a thousand, more than 1,000 buses will be in the CBD. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? Order. Point of order is being called by our own colleague. Is there any objection to that document being tabled? There is no objection. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. What steps, if any, is the government taking to reduce the misalignment between its transport priorities and those of the Auckland Council? Or are we seeing a deadlock between these two parties, the exact type of paralysis of, for Auckland that the super city was designed to avoid? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, well actually the Auckland Council and the Government have agreed on a forward plan for discussing that project alongside other projects. That involves firstly finalising and implementing the Auckland Spatial Plan and the City Centre Master Plan to establish achievable growth projections for the CBD. Secondly, to demonstrate commitment to resolving current and emerging CBD access issues, for example by improving bus operations and addressing capacity issues. Thirdly, development of a robust and achievable multimodal programme for transport in the CBD, which considers a thorough analysis of alternatives and identifies the optimal mix of modes to meet demand. 
Fourthly, begin implementation of large-scale residential developments along the rail corridors, which were anticipated by the Auckland Regional Growth Strategy. And fifthly, implement additional park and ride sites and changes to bus feeder services where appropriate in terms of overall public transport demand. I think it's those sorts of initiatives will ensure that we come to a cost-effective uh, and, uh, and appropriate transport response in Auckland for the benefit of Aucklanders and also for the whole country. Phil Twyford. Why is this government so intent on undermining the Council's transport goals and its plan for a compact city and so reluctant to work with Mayor Len Brown and the Auckland Council on making Auckland the most livable city in the world? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, for goodness sake, Mr Twyford. I mean, really, we have just announced the investment... Point of order. Order. Phil Twyford. The Minister seems to have fallen into Rodney Hyde's... Order. ...of... Whether or not the Minister has fallen into anything to do with Rodney Hyde is nothing to do with the proceedings of this House. Now, if the Member wishes to raise a point of order, it must relate to the proceedings of the House. Phil Twyford, does he continue to wish to raise a point of order? No. OK. Uh, the Honourable Stephen Joyce... Uh, Answering um, question. As I was just trying to point out to the member, Mr Speaker, the reality is the government has just announced a very, um, uh, very good project and with the Auckland Council where we have worked together and agreed a 50% increase on the number of electric trains that were contemplated by the previous government and previous Auckland councils to ensure we have a modern electric fleet in Auckland. That's the sort of cooperation we're achieving and it's going very well between ourselves and the Auckland Council. Question number six, Joe Goodhue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Michael.